Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. And in today's video, I think it's an important video and it was something that I was looking forward to actually do a test. And the test is what is the real world difference between 300 and 227 ppi 10.3 inch screens. Now remember, we've had 300 ppi screens for a long, long time on a smaller format. But since the introduction of the Kindle Scribe, we've had last year, we've had the first 10 point ish inch uh, screen with 300 ppi. Now in the meantime, we've received the um, yeah 300 ppi black and white content, but on color screens and that's not exactly the same thing simply before because it's uh, Kaleido 3 screens are darker and also they have that passive color matrix on top which does add to the fuzziness of the underlying 300 ppi monochromatic screen but it still is on top of it so it's not exactly the same thing as seeing 300 ppi uh, ink cells unobstructed like you have on the kindle scribes and what prompted this was basically note air 3 and by the way i don't know if this camera is gonna catch it but can you see just how much brighter the note air 3 is in the whites than the kindle itself Hmm, another one of those that, ooh, Kindle is so much brighter than the books devices. Really? Uh, not, not from where I'm standing and not from what I'm seeing right here. So I'm hoping that the camera is gonna pick that up. But anyway, that's a digression, just something that I noticed right here, right now. Um, the whole point of this video was a lot of people who were considering this, myself included as well, was uh, I listed as a con for this device. It doesn't have a 300 PPI screen. But that prompted the question, is that how big of a con is that really in the real world scenario so in this video i'm going to be comparing these two so that we can see that i'm going to do that a little bit differently so the way that i'm going to do this is i'm going to have same light settings controlled light settings artificial uh, same uh, camera setup which is fully manual so it does not change under no circumstances all of it completely locked down and then taking photos of each device individually so that they are also in the same spot of the focus of the lens itself so that we don't have any darkening or abbreviations of that all camera lenses have. So I wanted to equalize the conditions as much as I possibly could. I'm doing four zoom levels, right? And of course, I'm going to obstruct which device is which so that you can guess and maybe see when do you start noticing the difference. And of course, I'm going to reveal the results in the end of this video. And why am I doing this? Because I want to force you guys to kind of see how much of it is really there and when do you actually start to notice the difference? And what is the difference that we actually get to notice? So um, we got four zoom levels and we're gonna go through them now and check out the results later. All right, so probably for a lot of you, it has become very clear by the uh, final one, which was the microscopic image uh, of the zoom level that the uh, left hand side is, of course, 300 ppi, the Amazon Kindle Scribe, and the right hand side is the Note Air 3, which represents the 227 ppi. However, I would like to offer a little bit of a commentary and my observations regarding these uh, examples examples and explanation of what each zoom level is. So zoom level one that you actually saw was basically just fit page, regular fit page on to the document and the device was placed at the center of course of the frame and the frame was made in such a way that it frames the device. So basically that mimics what you see when you have the device in front of you so that you can see the entirety of the device. So at a certain 
kind of a height which is around I don't know 70 centimeters or something like that and then this was zoomed in uh, here to equal levels of course um, so that you can see how the clarity is from that kind of a distance and as you can see uh, the camera has some sort of irregularities and un it's a little bit kind of unclear and messy and in many ways that does represent uh, human vision from a certain distance there will be some imperfections and things like that from a certain distance or if it's a suboptimal distance depending on um, yeah the, the state of the eyesight but at this point the only thing that i can see the, between the two is not really clarity it's basically just that the on the 227 or the right hand image which is the note air 3 the uh, fonts appear to be rendered as thicker while they appear to be rendered thinner on the kindle scribe or the 300 ppi then we go to this one which is actually the same kind of thing so exactly the same setup except that this time the document has been fit to width right so that we have now the optimal size of the uh, words and uh, characters or the font optimal size on the image or on the screen of the device itself uh, same distance same everything uh, as in the previous one and here we can actually see that there's really for me this represents the real world example of comparison of 300 versus 227 yes if you pay really really close attention to certain specific areas you will be able to find the differences for example the capital s's and so for example if i look at the clarity of these s's here and the curves of s's there and maybe if i look at the clarity of the end of the parentheses here and there but you know in in regular reading i don't necessarily immediately see a huge difference between the two so only if i pay very very close attention and i know that this is what i'm looking for that this is the difference that i'm looking for i might be able to notice it the more much more noticeable difference that i see between the two is again that thickness the rendering of the characters the the, the words and the characters the fonts are rendered in a much more thicker manner uh, not less details, but a thicker manner than uh, on the books than they are on the Kindle Scribe. Then we get to the same setup, except that this time we have the maximum zoom of the camera itself. So it's fits to width, the same position, except that we have maximum zoom of the camera. And now it becomes much more obvious that we have a difference in a resolution, right? So wherever you look at the curves or diagonals that's where these are going to be exposed and you see that we have simply more resolution more denser image on the kindle scribe or 300 ppi versus 227 ppi however here we also see that that thickness that i was talking about is actually a real thing and this is exposing uh, something that's fairly important i think far more important than the 300 versus 227 ppi which is font character rendering and for me it's far more of a bigger impact the quality of rendering the fonts and displaying the fonts is better on the kindle scribe than it is on the books and to me it has nothing to do with the resolution the resolution is just like a icing on a cake but for me, the real cake here is simply the quality of rendering fonts on Kindle is better and it's much cleaner than it is on the um, uh, books device. Because you can see some tweening here. That's like shadowing and duplication here and a little bit here. And that's not resolution. That's simply, especially here. Look at this one there. I mean, this is nice and clean. This one is doubling and that's what we call tweening a little bit here and there. And that is, um, yeah, that, that is just an indication of incorrectly rendered fonts. Now, uh, 
probably this is something that might be able to be set up in a better way in the near reader but this experiment or this test actually just in exposed to me something else that i want to test out and double check in in a future video um but it's also interesting for me that it shows that I'm much more reacting to, yeah, as I said, the quality of the rendered fonts than the resolution itself. And then finally, we have the microscopic zoom image where it simply exposes the difference of the resolution, but it also exposes to me another important aspect, which is the quality of the surface that is on top of that uh, display, right? Because both Kindle Scribe and the Note Air 3, they have a paper-like pre-applied film uh, on top, which is rough, right? And that is something that the image, underlining image, needs to go through so that you can see until, uh, until it reaches your eyes. And while of course we can see a drastic difference in uh, the resolution quality here, it's not just the resolution. Here I think that we see uh, both of the things. We have the tweening thing that makes it thicker and a lower resolution and the surface is uh, the roughness, the structure of the roughness is much higher in scale as we can see here than it is on the Kindle Scribe, which in turn creates bigger refractive distortions, which in turn creates a fuzzier text. So all it's, it's to me, this is all connected and a, the story of yeah 300 here versus 227, it's a much more complex one and a much more multi-layered one than just the resolution. It actually has to do with yeah, quite a few things. So 300 PPI versus 227 PPI. Does it matter? Yes, I think it does, but way, way less than what people tend to make it out to be. Um, the main thing here for me, the main takeaway is actually down to something that I suspected for a long time. And it's like down to two things. The first one is the surface of on top of the screen. Now I intentionally picked these two because both of them have a paper-like screen film applied on top of the screen. So they both have that a little bit of added fuzziness, but the structure and the type of the fuzziness will differ. And also it will also differ what type of uh, screen reflectivity we have. So that those physical aspects of the surface of the screen, that actually matters to me from what I can see way more than uh, what the 300 PPI will bring to the table when you're just kind of going through it in a daily basis. Now, the second aspect, which I think is really, really important is the rendering quality of the fonts. And this is where Kindle Scribe is actually better because when I was comparing the similar size things, it's not included here because that was just something that afterwards I was checking it out and I didn't record the footage. But what I wanted to test out was uh, basically I was scared scaling roughly what, how, how, how much smaller the, uh, the, the page rendering would need to be on a 300 PPI screen uh, and then take kind of uh, measurements be between those two. And then I noticed that so that the ink cell resolution was pretty much exactly the same on the character itself, on the word itself. And when I got those kind of the same, then I noticed that uh, the main difference for me was just the quality of rendering the fonts on the Kindle Scribe. So it was not actually down to the screen itself. The niceness that I've seen it, it was the contrast interpretation and just how refined the software is for the display purposes. On books, it's far more brute force and it's like whoosh, there's no subtleties. And those subtleties that Kindle Scribe does have, I think they are far more important and far more beneficial than the actual 300 PPI. Now, of course, in this case, when you do have that kind of refinement of rendering and contrast and all of that kind of stuff, which is part of the Kindle Scribe, and you have 300 PPI on top, 
yes, at some point you will notice the difference between the Note Air 3 and the Kindle Scribe. That I think is my main point and my main takeaway from this kind of a test. I hope that you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below so you'll get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Also, if you do like the work that I do, please do visit mydeepguide.com slash shop where you can find MDO 2024 and MMP, which are both hyperlinked documents that help you organize your meeting needs in MMP case or your daily journaling organizing needs in MDO, my daily organizer case, all of which you can find a lot more details in the hyperlinks down below in the description below. You have dedicated playlists for both of these products so you can check out if some of those are for you or not. The whole point of this is that by purchasing one of these products, you help support the independence of my deep guide directly. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.